Welcome to Lamins.com in our lab video series on NPLS. You can find a complete list of NPLS video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we're going to be talking about two features that's going to help you speed up the LDP convergence, and those are targeted LDP and session protections. So let's talk briefly about this. By default, once the LDP sessions are established between the two routers, if the directly connected links between those two routers goes down, it takes down the LDP sessions with it. And once that link comes back up, the two router has to go through the whole negotiation and label exchange to reestablish that session. So LDP can be viewed by default to operate only across the directly connected link. So what a targeted LDP allows you to do is to build an LDP session across multiple hops since LDP is nothing but a TCP connections. So as long as the transport IPs between the two routers are reachable across the network, LDP session will remains up regardless of the status of the directly connected link between the two routers. And that's why when the directly connected link goes down and then comes back up, the two routers doesn't have to go through the label exchange process because the LDP session is never actually goes down with it. And that's essentially allowed you to have a faster convergence as well. Targeted LDP is a point-to-point -point or per-neighbor configuration. On the other hand, a session protection is actually built on top of targeted LDP, so it's actually leveraged the targeted LDP. And what it allows you to do is to build a targeted LDP sessions to all of your neighbors with essentially just one command. So it's actually not a feature by itself, but it's a more efficient way to configure targeted LDPs. For our lab topology, we're still using the same physical topology as the previous lab with eight routers, R1 through R8 and one switch, switch one with the physical connection as shown in this diagram. So if you guys have been watching our previous video, you should be very familiar with this topology already. Now moving down to our layer three topology, everything still remained the same with five routers in the middle that makes up a MPLS network. We already have the LDP configured between the router R1 through R5. So what we're gonna do in this lab is to enable targeted LDP among these routers. So we're just gonna be focusing here on the core MPLS. As far as the startup configuration for our devices, we're going to pick up where we left off from our lab SP0001. All right, so let's get started with our configuration and task number one here with the targeted LDP. So we need to configure R2 and R5 to maintain their LDP session even after the directly connected link is down. And then we need to configure R5 to only passively accept connection from R2. So going back on a diagram, what we're going to do here is the configuration of the targeted LDP between R2 and R5. Okay, so let's hop over onto R2, and then we can do show MPLS just before we do anything, binding, and check on all the label binding being received from the router R5 on R2. As you can see, these are the list of all the labels coming in from R5. Okay, so what we're going to do now is to shut down the serial interface that connects R2 to R5. It's just going to show you what happens before we actually can uh, configure the target LDP. And these are the default behavior, so shut. You see it took down your P as well as LDP. And now if you do show MPLS LDP binding neighbor, you can see that we no longer have any labels received from R5. So it essentially took down the LDP session. Okay, so and now we're going to re-enable the interface. So no shut. So this is where it takes a couple seconds for the interface to come up and then the TCP sessions to reestablish between R2 and R5. As you can see it took a couple seconds there and now we finally have the LDP neighbor up. And once again, we are receiving the label from R5. Okay, so that's the default behavior as far as the directly connected link between two router goes down. The whole LDP session and the label binding goes away with it. So now we're going to try to avoid that and keep our LDP sessions up, even though that the serial link may go down. So that way when it comes back and we don't have to try to reestablish the LDP session. And the way to do that is on R2. We need to configure a target LDP, and that's part of the LDP neighbor command. So it's a per neighbor configuration. Do question mark. Right here we have an option to build a targeted LDP, and we can pick either LDP or TDP. We're going to do LDP, enter. Okay, so when you use this command, you're basically telling router R2 to be 
an active peer. So we'll be trying to actively build a TCP or targeted LDP connection to R5. Now we're going to have to hop over to R5 and complete the configuration on the R5 side. And we can either use the exact same command on R5, so it will be an active talking to an active, but I believe our task is, requires us to configure R5 to only passively accept connection from R2, so we do not want R5 to be actively building connections to R2, but just to accept the connections coming in from R2. Okay, so we could go ahead and configure R5 to accept connection from any routers, but here we're going to lock it down so that only R2 targeted LDP sessions will be accepted. So we're going to have to come up with an access list that will define R2 transport IP that will R5 be seeing coming in from, and that will be R2 loopback 0. So we'll permit host 162.16.0.2. Okay, since all of our routers are configured with the router ID from loopback 0. Okay, then we can do MPLS LDP discovery targeted hello. So it's no longer part of the neighbor command, but it's a part of LDP discovery command. And here we have an option to configure accept, whole time, or interval. So here we're just going to do accept. So R5 will accept connection. If we enter right here, we're just going to accept any targeted LDP session from any routers. So we do not want to, don't want to do that for a security reason. Here we're just going to accept from R2, and that's going to tie it to the access list. Okay, enter. Let's give it a second right here. Now we have one match. That means our targeted LDP session should be up. And to confirm that, we can do show MPLS LDP discovery. So you can see that in addition to a default discovery, which is across the point-to-point -point serial link right here with the multicast, if you remember, 224002 multicast group that the router used to discover each other. We also have an additional discovery with the target hello. And this goes directly between the R5 loopback to R2 loopback. And this is part of our targeted LDP session. Okay, so the target LDP is no longer part of or utilize the local multicast group. But it has actually become a unicast packet. So that's why it allows the packet to travel across multiple hops if needed. Something if you do show MPLS LDP neighbor. Here with the neighbor R2, we have a serial link discovery source as well as a targeted hello and it's also marked the r5 side as passive okay so now going back to r2 and do a show mpls ldp discovery on r2 as well you can see an r2 side is being marked as active well before we perform another test we're shutting down our serial link between r2 and r5 let's take a quick look at the r2 forwarding table you can see some of the labels. R2 is actually load balancing between R4 and R5, and R4 is off 0, 0, 0, 0, and R5 is off 0, 0, 1, 0. Okay, going back to the topology, just to give you an idea. So right here, currently R2 is load balancing between R4 and R5 for some of the labels, the one that has the equal cost path uh, routes. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and shut down the serial interface to R5. So that would be shut. Now you can see the EIGP neighbor went down. So now let's go ahead and do show MPLS LDP. Let's go check the binding table from our neighbor, 1605. You can see that this time the labels coming from R5 is still in the binding table of R2. And the reason for that is the LDP session between R2 and R5, which is TCP session, didn't go down with the link. And we can do show. MPLS neighbor, uh, LDP neighbor. You can see right here R2 still have an LDP session with R5 with the target hello right here. So right now since we took down the link between R2 and R5, the LDP session is actually rerouted across R4 because we're doing loop back to loop back between R2 and R5 and that session remains up and functioning. Okay, so on R2, even though we still have all the labels from R5, if you do show MPLS forwarding, but since the serial one, uh, 010 has gone down, it's been taken off the forwarding table because it's no longer usable. 
and now we're just left with the connections to router R4. Okay, so even though the label itself remains in the binding table, those label doesn't actually get used by R2 because the physical path is no longer there. Okay, so now let's go back and no shut serial 010. I'm just going to have to wait for the serial interface to come up. You see that the LDP session never have to be reestablished. Okay, and the label in the binding table never goes away. So that's probably right there, save you a second or a sub-second of convergence time. All right, so that should complete uh, task number one. Moving down to task number two, session protection. So you have to, have to configure R3, R4, and R5 to maintain their LDP session, even when their directly connected links are down. And we are allowed to only use one MPLS command per router. Okay, so jumping over to the diagram. So here we're going to have to build a targeted LDP session between R3 to R4 and R3 to R5. So actually, this is incorrect in the diagram between R1 to R3, since there isn't really a redundant physical link between R1 and R3. There's not actually no point to build a targeted LDP. Okay, so we're just dealing with R3, R4, and R3 and R5 here. So the whole tar uh, concept with targeted LDP remains the same. It's just a different way of us configuring it now. And that's by the way of session protection. So let's start with the router R3. And by default, when you configure a session protection command, the router will actually build a target LDP to all of its neighbors unless you restrict it to only certain IPs, which is what we're going to do since we don't want to build a target LDP to R1. So for R3, we come up with the access list. So I call it MPLS protect. Okay, and that's going to include the router ID of R4 and R5. And now we get into the MPLS LDP session protection. And as I say, if you press enter right here, it's going to try to build targeted LDP to all of his neighbor. But for us, we just want to do I'll build the session to R4 and R5. So we're going to tie it to the access list we just configured, call MPLS underscore protect. And then we're just going to enter. Okay. Now, if you do show MPLS LDP discovery, on R3, you can actually see that the R3 is actively transmitting the targeted hello to R4 and R5, but so far we haven't received anything in return. Okay, and that's because we haven't done the configuration on R4 or R5, so let's go ahead and do that. Same thing, IP access list, standard MPLS protect, permit host, let's say 260.0.3, and then dot five because we want to build the session from R4 to R3 and R5, although it doesn't really, it should have been shown in this diagram, so this connection right here should be protected as well. Okay, again, going back and do MPLS LDP session protection for MPLS protect. Now we can do show MPLS LDP discovery. So you can see that R4 is both active and passive, and it has already transmit and then receive their target hello from R3. Okay, nothing yet from R5 because that's the last router we have to take care of. So on R5, configure IP access list, standard MPLS, protect, permit, hose, dot three and dot four. MPLS LDP session protection for MPLS protect. Looks like I have a typo everywhere. There you go. Fix them up. Do you show MPLS LDP discovery? Okay, for R5, we already have the targeted LDP configured from our previous task to R2. And here, these are the one that's it's a result of the session protection command that goes to R4 and R3. Okay, now let's go ahead and do a quick verification. You can see that uh, it looks very much the same, except that for our session protection, R5 is being active and passive. Okay, now to verify our configuration on R3, we're going to do show MPLS LDP binding coming from a neighbor of 162.16.0.4. You can see there's a whole lots of label, uh, labels coming in from R4. 
Now from R3, we're going to shut down the interface, and that's the interface right here, 0, 0, 0, 0. Shut. Okay, and if you do show MPLS, LDP, binding, neighbor, so do 16, 0 0.4, one more time, and all of those labels are still there. All right, if you show MPLS forwarding, you can see the serial link 0, 0, 0 has been taken off the forwarding table since that link is currently physically down. Okay, so it's not used, although the label has been is being maintained in the binding table. Alright, let me make sure I put that back, no shut. And that should pretty much complete our task number two. So as you can see the targeted LDP doesn't do much by itself because if you were going to configure that per neighbor you might as well do a session protection and have the targeted LDP built to all of your neighbors with much less number of commands. But nevertheless, just want to show you the concept behind target LDP because target LDP will comes into play a lot when we start dealing with the technology like pseudo wired or even the traffic engineering. Although you're not going to be configuring target LDP manually, it's just going to be one of those underlying technology that gets utilized by those particular features. Okay, so that wraps up our video on MPLS targeted LDP. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching LabMinutes.com, and I'll see you guys in the next video.